Here it is. My first seven round mock draft of the year. Oh boy, oh boy, quick. Trigger warning. You might not see all the players that you love or like on this list because I have some guys listed as returners and I also just haven't looked at everybody yet. So let me know who you think probably should have been included in the comment section below. Uh, I'm doing this by draft classes. It's easier to digest that way. Uh, so it's going to be like Cardinals, Bears. You're going to see everyone who got drafted for your favorite teams. Uh, it's just e easier to look at. I think visually it's a lot, a lot more stimulating too. By the way, a lot of work goes into these. A lot. I was up real late doing all these overlays and whatnot and having to go through the whole draft anyway. So show the video love. Give it a thumbs up. Go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. And we can hash it all out in the comment section below. I have merch if you want to check that out. I got the link for the Teesprings shop in the description as well as some affiliate links for sports memorabilia and sports merch if you want to get some Christmas shopping done. Let's go ahead and get into it because it's going to be a long one. Oh, baby. All right, Arizona Cardinals. You may notice I put 2021 draft. Uh, you're only going to see it this time and then with Washington. I Thank goodness I noticed it pretty early. But, uh, yeah, 2022 draft, obviously. So, we ended up getting Karloftis. Uh, I think he could be a J.J. Watt-esque. And, and not to say you can't have both those guys on the same field or on the field at the same time. It was just, I feel like Karloftis, he was one of the highest guys on, or the higher guys on my board available at the time. I went ahead and took him. Brees Hall, James Conner, man. He's, what, on a one-year deal? Go ahead and get a just all-around better back. Good compliment to Chase Edmonds. Abraham Lucas, yo, the Cardinals, they love them four wide receiver sets. It's a K Cliff Kingsbury offense. He's a f one of the best tr uh, best pass protectors in this class, one of the most uh, battle-tested. Uh, and then I grabbed a couple of corners because, again, we're here in the later rounds at this point. Uh, and Bernard Converse out of Oklahoma State's actually been really good this season. I would say he's kind of like that, um, probably very similar to Rondarius Williams who came out of Oklahoma State last year. Uh, then Ollie Green, we grabbed Adam Mizzou, the former Tulsa transfer. And I actually like the Xavier Hutchinson pick because AJ Green, how long is he going to be around? Who knows? Let's grab Hutchinson. He's got some good after the catch ability for a big receiver. Not a great separator, but he's a good contested catch guy that you could rely on down deep. So I thought it was a good pick at the end of the draft there. On to the next. We got the Atlanta Falcons, Ahmad Gardner. I've never mocked Mod Gardner to the Falcons, and it just ended up happening that way in this class. Like I was, like I either want, I know I went in going into this draft knowing I either want pass rush or I want some help out with coverage, someone across from AJ Terrell. So we ended up being able to get the sauce. I like that. Jamison Williams was available to us in the second round, especially with everything up in the air with Calvin Ridley. Thought it was important to grab receivers, and you're going to see I kind of addressed that a second time with Anaya Smith, who is kind of like this run running back um, wide receiver mix. You could utilize him in a lot of different ways. He's not like, doesn't have like Cordell Patterson's size or skill set. I mean, both, they, they go fast, but uh, I, I kind of like Anaya as the slot slash a guy we could throw in the backfield. Tanner McKee was available. Why not start developing your quarterback of the future? Uh, this guy's got a small sample size. He's got like a Davis Mills sample size, but I think he's a better prospect than him. Arnold Ebiketti, dude's a monster. Uh, just this edge class is so deep. You're, we're going to see a lot of good edge prospects fall. So I, we kind of lucked out with him. We grabbed another slot corner in um, slot corners slash uh, dime package corner in Taiwan Mullen. Dude's been absolutely outstanding at Indiana. It's just size is going to force him into that. And then Xavier Thomas is a guy that we can use in a variety of different ways. Um, uh, they're out of Clemson. He was also available. So I actually really liked this class in particular for the Atlanta Falcons. Moving on to the Baltimore Ravens. They had a lot of picks. We grabbed Jake Drake Jackson. He ended up falling. Again, it, it's... In the draft, good players fall. That's what happens. All right. So we grab Jackson. Uh, just th this guy that could be a tie, like a Tyus Bowser upgrade, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, Justin Jacobs, one of my favorite picks. A guy that'll be 
I think, much better in coverage than Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen, he's got, like, athletically, he's got the tools. It's just this, it's not clicking upstairs for him yet. Uh, Rashid Walker, I think, is a good developmental prospect, a guy that has the physical tool set. Just the play hasn't been there. Same with Seven Banks. You know, I've been very hard on Seven Banks. Rightfully so. He The play does not match the athletic ability, so a guy you can work on. Uh, Dom Peterson, I think, is a great Derek Wolf replacement. I'm very high on Dom Peterson. Uh, an undersized interior player with a big motor. Very strong, very explosive. Zonovan Knight, we bring in the boom. Just grabbing some running back depth after, you know, the crisis. The running back crisis that was the Ravens' uh, preseason. Uh, John Revez out of uh, Kansas State. Kind of reminds me of a Dalton Reisner. Get some help on the interior. I really like the Zay Flowers pick. Straight up. Because what are they going to do with Hollywood Brown? I don't know. But like Zay Flowers, very similar skill set. The guy go fast. He's very good after the catch. He's been playing a majority out wide. For being a smaller receiver, playing out wide and facing press. I like that. Uh, Marquise Bell out of Florida A&M, man. This is a cat to watch out for, like, in the Senior Bowl. Like, he's got some fun tape. He's got some fun tape. Uh, we got Trey Berry. Just some tight end depth. He's kind of like a poor man's Hunter Lawn, I would say. So, yeah, I liked, I liked how this draft actually turned out for the Ravens as well. Uh, let's keep going to the Buffalo Bills. We grabbed a big boy, Travis Jones, in the first round. Go check out my defensive interior list. I am getting really high on Travis Jones. We grabbed Thayer Mumford as kind of a guard. Because let's be honest, the guard position is not that good for the Bills right now. Uh, Jerome Ford, because I know Bills fans, they want to run him back. Because like Zach Moss, Devin Singletary, they're very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Schizophrenic when it comes to, am I going to play good today or am I going to play bad? They're bipolar. Uh, so Jerome Ford's been a home run threat. He's actually a very physical guy, especially in the around the line of scrimmage or around the um, red zone. Uh, former Alabama recruit. He's one of the guys I've been really high on uh, in thus far this season. Uh, THT, man, corner. I, I just like the guy's talent. Uh, you're going to question his size, but I think you could throw him in the slot immediately. Alec Pierce is just another deep threat there with Gabriel Williams. Uh, cause well, let's see. I don't know how long Emmanuel Sanders like is he on. I can't remember if he's on a two year deal. Uh, Josh Proctor he got he got hurt for the rest of the season, but I think athletically he's a guy that's gonna open up a lot of eyes if he's able to recover and make it to the combine. Darian Butler is just a good another guy that's just been a good coverage linebacker there for uh, Arizona State. He's made a lot of plays there, and then uh, Mustafa, solid run defender. I'll just say that. Solid run defender. We grabbed one of those. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's I'm not I'm not gonna lie to you. This isn't the sexiest draft class. I mean, I love Jones. M Mumford is a guy that you know you could probably start immediately. Uh, I think Ford spices up that running back room. Uh, Tht I think just adds competition. Uh, and then Proctor Pierce. Uh, even Butler, I think some guys can maybe um, develop for the future. Let's keep going. Uh, Carolina Panthers. Yo, oh, this was so tough. So we grabbed Charles Cross. That wasn't the tough part, right? Uh, because they need help at tackle, at left tackle mainly. Bradley Chris or Brady Christensen, rough time, probably moving to guard. Um, so we grabbed that. They don't have a pick till pick 104. Woof, woof, and woof. Uh, so we grabbed Jared Patterson. Uh, maybe this replacement for Matt uh, Paredes, who's, who was given a pretty sizable deal, but has not really lived up to it. Uh, we got Ellis Brooks, who I think is a very good run stuff in linebacker. That just adds some good depth there. Jordan, uh, what is this? Is it Strachan? Oh, I'm so bad with last names. A uh, guy form, used to used to, he was a transfer from Georgia Southern. He's playing really good. He's playing uh, this year at um, South Carolina. He's playing this stand up like hybrid rush linebacker role there. And I think this is if they don't hold on to uh, Hassan Reddick, 
This is a guy maybe you could develop to fill in that role someday. Uh, Brennan Armstrong, just a good developmental quarterback to have on the roster, uh, especially with Sam Darnold being Sam Darnold right now. And then Mike Rose, more um, linebacker depth. Because I feel like that might be their least deep spot on defense. I mean, you could you could probably say safety too, but I think they've been getting decent like decent play out of uh, is it who's been playing back there? Burris? Is it Justin Burris? I think so. Uh, not positive. Can't think off the top of my head. Sorry, I just did a draft for thirty two teams, all seven rounds. The my mind might not all be there all the way. Chicago Bears. Another one that may not seem sexy, but I only had five picks to work with. Uh, Daxon Hill, I liked a lot in the second round. A guy that could play in the slot. He could play deep, help take some of that pressure off of Eddie Jackson. Zion Nelson is a guy I really think probably ends up returning, but I included him in here. We grabbed him in the third. Uh, a guy with huge athletic upside. I think you mo just move Tevin Jenkins back to the right side where he's comfortable. Um, not that he's played a lot this year, but... Uh, Dante Dem uh, Demas is a guy that might not be ready to go at the start of the season. Uh, he was a dude that was moving up a lot of draft boards out of Maryland. Him and his uh, teammate Rakim, who Jared, who's pro who's going to be a probably a highly highly sought out pick too in the 2023 draft. But yeah, it was real tragic the injury. Uh, but you know the guy's got talent. He's got great speed for his size. So especially with Allen Robinson. Will he stay? Will he go? I think adding that's nice. Uh, Rashad Winston, I like a lot. I was thinking about corner, but I mean, Daxon Hill gives you a lot of versatility. I think he's a guy you could actually play it outside at corner as well. So I, it allowed me to take a Wins, Winston, um, who was the best player available on my board. At 190, you kind of want to go with best player available. And then Aaron Haynes Ford, another guy that was uh, the highest guy on my board at the time. So I think I just snagged him, grabbed some nice linebacker depth. Cincinnati Bengals, we grabbed Nicholas Petit Freer to come in there and be our left slash right tackle, whatever they want to do with him. And then we addressed the center position immediately. Andrew Voorhees is one of my uh, hot risers. I cover the Pac-12 for blue, blue chip scouting. Um, so Voorhees was a guy that I've watched a lot of this year. Been very impressed. I think he's perfectly made for Zach Taylor's scheme. So we grabbed him, Mikhail, uh, Mikhail Wright, there to come in, get some cornerback depth. And we double dip, dude, Tariq Castro Fields. Uh, I don't have Joey Porter coming out in this class. I have him as a returner. So just going to break your heart right there if you're a big Porter fan. So. Yeah, we double dipped at the corner position because I really think they could use more depth. Uh, Trey Waynes ain't the future there. They got Eli Apple now playing on the outside too. So, uh, Keenan Stewart is a good developmental guy. I think that because I, I the, the Bengals are, are a team that I think they're gonna want a lot, a like a lot of depth on that defensive line, and he provides that. Uh, Micah McFadden is a good coverage linebacker. He's also a good blitzing linebacker. So I thought it was kind of a steal at this point. Speaking of steals, Jerion Ely here at 201. I don't know why he fell this far. I just like I whenever I was up with another team, I just was like, ah, I don't really need or need him. But yeah, no, this is a very good receiving back we're getting right here. And then Jeffrey Gunter at edge. Um it was a pick. Snagged it. <laughs> Uh, on to the Cleveland Browns. We went ahead. Garrett Wilson. Uh, OBJ, probably OB gone. Oh, he's so creative, I know. Uh, but Garrett Wilson's one of my top receivers in this class, so we went ahead and snagged him. Uh, I really like Devontae Wyatt, so I grabbed him there at pick 50 to help out on the interior, give it a little bit more depth um, and a little bit more stank. And then, um, oh, man, let me see if I can get, get his name. Lacetus Smith? You'll let me know if I'm wrong. Uh, but, again, they have some contracts coming up on the interior there with Wyatt Teller. Um, Joel, was it? Uh, oh, my gosh, dude. Oh, speaking of, I can't get it. Uh, the former Nevada guy at guard. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, just grabbing depth, and this was just a good spot for him. Logan Hall at 103 I thought was really good as well, a guy that's um, 
Yeah, he's got very imposing size, 6'6", 260. Mainly he's played on the interior at Houston, but he's going to be an edge guy. Uh, Owen Popo, I loved that pick, dude. I thought it was an absolute steal. He's an absolute athlete. He is what the, they want on defense. They're looking for these athletic freaks in the secondary. They want to run. A, they want Their main package is a sub package. Popo helps them out with that. Uh, Jack Jones, I really think is going to be a really good slot corner in the NFL. Um, he mainly plays on the outside. He's an older prospect, but he's got great short air. Like, everything about him just screams slot corner. I'll just say that. Uh, Tyler Vrabel was good depth at tackle. Um, he's been very good there at Bo Boston College. And Kadofi Wright, just another guy. Freak athlete, great length uh, out of Buffalo. That could be a good, good uh, sub-package guy. And the Dallas Cowboys, Jordan Battle, man. Jordan Battle, I just really like that pick for the Cowboys there at uh, 27. Jackson Kirkland, we took at 59. Uh, it, the fall was real for Kirkland, man. I was pretty high on him before the season. But, yeah, he ends up falling. We snag him there. And then Boye um, Mafe. Oh, my gosh, I'm going to get his name down. Just He's just an athletic freak. You got to imagine that they pay Randy Gregory, you know, after the year he's having. But if they don't, he's kind of an ideal Randy Gregory, like, replacement. Like, this cat's really good and probably should go a lot higher than this. Just, again, very stacked edge class. Jermaine Waller, I thought was a good pick there at uh, 129. Grant Gibson, potential replacement at center if things don't get good with Tyler Biotish. Uh, Jaden Reed. I think absolute steal at 169. Absolute steal. And actually, Mitchell Agu, the edge out of UCLA, absolute steal at 205. Just absolute steal. Guys that I have a lot higher on my board, um, they just didn't happen that way. Especially with, um, oh my gosh, Michael Gallup, leave a free agency. Like, they got some good guys there, and was it Noah Brown, Cedric Wilson? But... Grabbing Jaden Jaden Reed here with your what six pick, ain't bad, ain't bad. I liked it. I liked. It. I actually really liked this class. I thought this class has a ton of upside. Denver Broncos. We went Sam Howe at pick sixteen, uh, and we were able to get Nick Benito at forty eight. Man, I liked those first two picks, and then Daniel Falele. Been playing. He's been a monster on the right side. We got him at 64. Uh, I really think we got plug-and-play starters. Um, actually, potentially with our first five picks. Because uh, Chad Muma, linebacker, could be a guy that replaces like a... Is it Josie Jewell? Because um, they got very similar skill sets, actually. Verone McKinley is a guy you can really trust in the back end. Help out with Justin Simmons. Uh, they got, I know they got other guys back there. What about, oh, who's that cat out of Indiana? And then they got the Texas uh, guy, Caden Stearns. And I think it's Jameer Johnson. Jamar Johnson? I can't remember, but I don't care. McKinley should have went a lot higher than, probably should have went closer to like the 60, 70 range. And he was available here. So I took him. Uh, James Cook. He is literally like could be the Michael Carter to Javante Williams. This is like going back to this is literally we're going back to the end like the UNC days. We're getting we're gonna get Javante your quarterback. You remember Sam Howe? He liked Sam Howe. We're bringing Howe in town. I know I know James Cook ain't Michael Carter, but they got very similar skill sets, and uh, I'd say Cook might have the better size. Uh, Justin Shorter, I think, is, if they don't end up bringing back Cortland Sutton, Shorter is a big wide receiver, I think, with a ton of upside. Uh, Kate Auden, I think, is going to be a good tight end, too, in the league. Uh, and then just, again, these are like seventh-round picks here, uh, just helping out the interior defensive line and the interior offensive line. Um, Hayes is kind of a, like a phone booth defender, too, though. Or phone booth blocker, excuse me. But I liked this class. Uh, I'm probably going to say that about all my classes. Uh, no, there's a couple where I was like, mm, could have done better. Detroit Lions, Kayvon, we had 11 picks. Kayvon Thibodeau, uh, we went to Kobe Dean. We went Carson Strong. And then we went back to back. We were like, let's. I wanted to get him some big boy 
deep threats. And we got Jalen Tolbert. We got Justin Ross. You got to think one of them works out, right? But uh, And we got the right quarterback to do it in Carson Strong. But I, I really think we helped improve the defense immediately. Because right after that, I kind of started focusing on the secondary with the defense. Um, with... Uh, was it Rajon? 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 I'm gonna get that down. It's Nation Wright's brother, um, at a uh, Oregon State. He's having actually a pretty darn good season. Uh, Corker out of Kentucky, I think, could be a good, uh, probably more more of a box safety. Um, we also grabbed Josh Williams, who Jordan Reed from the Draft Network absolutely loves this cat out of uh, was it Fateville State. Uh, he's a FCS project, or so I thought. Grabbing him at the end was pretty, pretty sly, pretty slick. Um, we grabbed Tyler Batty because I mean he was available at two eighteen. I couldn't help myself. Uh, Tyrese Robinson was a good pickup. You might be looking at Hendon Hooker. Uh, this is literally my taste, uh, Taysom Hill pick of the of the Detroit's class. That's what Hooker is to me. So, yeah. Come on, it's Dan Campbell, man. You're going you're gonna to tell me he ain't going to look me like, hmm, I need me a Taysom Hill. Hmm. Hooker's the guy. So, yeah, I couldn't help myself, man. I couldn't help. It was the pick 230. I couldn't help myself, man. Uh, but this draft was pretty fun, dude. Like, I think we, there's a lot of potential at the, in, in, the, in that class we got right here. Green Bay Packers, man. We moving on from Aaron Rodgers, um, not willingly, but we are. Uh, Traylon Burks ended up being our first pick for the Packers. Just grab a nice, big, meaty receiver. Uh, great size, great physicality, great speed. So grabbed him, uh, especially with Devontae. Don't, prob I can't see him coming back. Uh, Jermaine Johnson and Kobe Wooden, I think, instantly improves the pass rush a ton. Because I don't think Zadarius Smith or Preston Smith will probably be back. So I made that assumption with those two picks because I think those are two very quality guys that could really help out. Max Mitchell getting some depth on the offensive line that's been banged up, though it's been playing pretty well despite being banged up. Uh, Riley Moss, just like Eric Stokes, he go fast. Uh, Channing Tindall. I think, especially if like Devondre, if Devondre Campbell... If he kind of falls off after having this Pro Bowl season right now, uh, Tindall has a very similar skill set. I think just a lot more explosive. Uh, Tyler Davis, just some more help on the line. Uh, and he's got just, he's a bit thicker than a wooden. Uh, Reggie Robertson has been a fantastic receiver. Could have been a day two pick in the 2021 class, if not for an ACL tear. And then Cameron Latu at a Alabama. He's going to be a very good tight end, too. Very good. Like, the dude's been a great red zone target. Does a little bit after the catch, too, and he's been a phenomenal blocker. Uh, by the way, Billingsley, he's not in here. I have him as a returner. So, fun fact. Let's keep this train moving. Houston Texans. Man, this was tough, man. I, I'm i not going to lie, y'all, man. I, I just tried making good picks. Uh, which, I mean, I guess that's what you're supposed to do, right? So we grabbed Derek Stanley number two overall because I was like, this is a deep edge class. I could get edge a little bit later. Let's help the secondary. Mainly the corner position. Corner position is not great. Uh, Myja Sanders got him immediately in the second. I was like, great. Edge rush and coverage. I've addressed those needs. And then I was like, all right, 66, Desmond Ritter. Why not? Why not? Let's have the third rounders battle it out. See if one lasts. Hopefully. And if, like, best case scenario, they're both really good and you could trade them. Trade one, at least. Uh, David Bell at 87. I think, I really do think he's probably going to fall. I'm going to have him a lot higher on my board, but I think he'll fall be just because he's not an elite separator. But what he can do after the catch, and again, you're keep, you got to be keeping Brandon Cooks. So, David Bell is a guy that is very good after the catch, very, very good body control, very good contested catcher basically the polar opposite of what Brandon Cooks is, dude. This, that dude's just a burner, man. He's so quick. So I like though that is like a one, like a one, two duo. Um, also, Bell's a guy you can kick into the slot as a big slot because I know they got Nico Collins there too. Uh, Cade Mays, 
play right tackle. He's been doing a good job this year of it. Uh, Brian Asu, uh, Asamoa uh, ended up just falling. I was like, yeah, we need uh, – <laughs> let's take linebacker help. I'm down. Uh, and then I just uh, – I grabbed uh, Chris Rodriguez Jr. because he was the highest guy on my board, I think, at the time uh, among the running backs. And all they're going to have really is right Philip Lindsay, right? I think so. So I grabbed Rodriguez, who does a lot less in the passing attack than a guy like Lindsay. And at 247, I was like, oh, screw it, dude. Let's double dip here. I mean, this is like we're at the end of the seventh round. So we got Muhammad. Uh, Ibrahim out of Minnesota who had a great opener and then the injury obviously that ended his season so overall I think it was a good draft I don't know you tell me in the comment section the Indianapolis Colts we grabbed Trevor Pennant with the 41st pick so he is our uh heir apparent to Anthony Costanzo uh well Eric Fisher I guess now but let's be honest Eric Fisher was just a band-aid for Anthony Costanzo uh, then I don't know if you're familiar with this guy, Leonard Johnson, a guy that he has played all over the secondary for Duke. He's been phenomenal this season. Like this guy's allowing, I think, a completion percentage of 25% when targeted. Like this guy's been really good this year. Um, I don't know if he's going to be the fastest guy on the field, but he's got good size. And at the very least, you could probably play him at safety too. So I like the flexibility. You're going to notice I went safety a couple of more times because I really feel like they need more depth. And I mean, ugh, Xavier Rhodes, is he gone after the year? Who's your sa Who's your corner one? Well, shoot, who's your corner two, you know? So yeah, a lot of questions I have. Uh, Wandale Robinson, just a, like Paris Campbell can't stay healthy. Let's just get a guy that just can make people miss after the catch. Uh, Keaton Slovis, a 151, like, come on. You're going to tell me that like, Slovis can't come in and he could, he can't beat out Sam Ellinger? That's sad. <laughs> Don't tell me that. Uh, Matt Hankins, a guy that's, again, again, has some concerns about his speed, but he's been pretty locked down, good size. Uh, Caillou Blue Kelly has been a favorite of mine, a guy that's played inside, he's played in the slot. Uh, I said inside. Outside, he's played in the slot there at Stanford. He had a very good game against Drake Drake London. The two just went back and forth. Like And Kelly, like for his size, extremely physical. So I like this cat. I like that cat a lot. So I really addressed the corner position because I feel like that was probably the area that needed the most uh, fine-tuning. I grabbed Ronnie Rivers to be a... Naheem Hines replacement. I don't know what kind of contract Naheem Hines is on, but uh, I think Rivers has a very similar skill set to him. Uh, and then Smoke Monday. He was one of the final picks in the draft. We grabbed a safety because I'm not going to lie to y'all. I saw Smoke. I saw Monday, and I was like, that's a hell of a name. Uh, nah, nah, nah. The dude was like in my top 20 safety, so there's a little precedent to it. Oh, uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars. You, you First off, you got to admire my whole little Photoshop Trevor Lawrence on Gardner Minshew. I used this last season, and I pull up my overlays for uh, this time around, and I was like, I ain't changing that. That's good. That's good. That's funny. Uh, anyway, we grabbed Evan Neal. That's pretty predictable. A lot of people are kind of doing that. Uh, Roger McCreary made it to us in the, th in the uh, second, so I snagged him. Because they need help at corner. Uh, Zion, Toy Paloa, Fetty. Uh, dude, ZTF, dude. Probably could go higher than this, depending on how he finishes the season out. He's finally starting to get more and more and more snaps. He's looking great from injury. But, yeah, let's get some uh, help. Let's get some pass rush. Uh, and I did that with, actually, Federian Mathis, a dude that's got big boy size. And he's been rushing the passer very efficiently. Grabbed more cornerback help with uh, Lante Taylor. Big speedster. Uh, and then Jalen Pitcher is more of a slot slash box safety. I liked him there. Uh, Javion uh, Hiley out of Coastal Carolina. Not a speedster, but this is a guy that's been making a lot of plays. Good contest to catch and um, good force good force miss tackler as well. So I, I kind of like adding him to the receiving group there. Um, Dawson De uh, Deaton is just some good versatility there or good depth for the offensive line. He can play tackle and guard. I got uh, my boy Eddie, the linebacker out of Washington. 
He not great size, but it is a guy that is a very sure tackler. He navigates running lanes very well. Doesn't allow himself to get stuck on blocks. I like him a lot. And then Jack Campbell is just kind of a meteor version. <laughs> So it's like kind of hoping one of those guys maybe pans out there uh, with our last few picks. So, uh, yeah, pretty good draft here. I think uh, – I'm not going to lie. Oh, it kind of remind like I, li I like the possibility. Like the upside on these guys are, is really good. Uh, Kansas City Chiefs. Kingsley and Agbari, one of my favorite picks. Like I love this cat. He should be getting more attention. Jahan Dodson made it to 46. I had to take him. <laughs> That's just that's just a fun player to have. Uh, Lewis Sign grabbing another safety there because I know this Chiefs like to play um, three safety sets. This guy's a headhunter, hard hitter, great explosiveness, making a lot of plays on the ball this year. Jermaine Lowell, he he's a senior. He missed all of this season. Um, he I think it was a I think it was a pec tear. I'm not positive, but um, got hurt before the opener. This is a cat I think I had at two or three on my defensive interior board. And it just sucks that he got hurt. Like, it cost him his whole season. He probably could have gone a lot higher than this. So, uh, we grabbed him here because, hey, the defensive line, if you're not named Chris Jones, that defensive line sucks. Straight up. It's just bad. Uh, because I'm not even going to put blame on the corners. They got good cornerback talent there. The pass rush is just terrible. Uh, but then we had, like, these late picks, 241, 249. So I just grabbed Devin Taylor, a guy that I've liked. He was, a uh, played, what, four, three, three years, I think, at Illinois State. Uh, played one year at Virginia Tech, but they moved him to safety. And then he moved, uh, transferred to Bowling Green, where he's been pretty darn good. Um, this is a guy that's actually done drills and with Antonio Brown, and he looks like guard him well. So, you know, you got a pretty at least a pretty good man corner there. So I grabbed him. He, he's a, he might be a sleeper. Who knows? And then Calvin Turner Jr. is a guy that's been just a playmaker for Hawaii. He, he's taken – carries he's he's like the leader well okay, not the leader rusher they got day day there but uh he is he's like second on the team in rushing yards as well as being the leader receiver there like the dude's been great not a speedster but he makes his guy he makes guys miss so i was like yeah let's get this guy i put op not because he's op he's kind of op but because he's an offensive player <laughs> i put i should have put o o w dude offensive weapon uh los angeles chargers we grabbed jordan davis to kind of help with the run defense a little pass rushing upside there uh a little bit but we grabbed him at 20 isaiah likely i like uh very like this dude's just gonna be a sick receiving tight end in the league uh he's almost like a jumbo receiver really uh david ojobo we grabbed him at 84 deep edge class man good players fall Good players fall in the draft. That's just the fact of the matter. So we grabbed Ojobo, who ooh, having a great year. Khalil Shakir, one of my favorite receivers in this class. He's not the fastest guy. He's not the most physical guy. He's just a guy that gets things done. I mean, okay, to be fair, he's very physical at the catch point. Uh, just doesn't always win it. Uh, I grabbed Chad White because the if you're not Austin Eckler, the running back room is kind of underwhelming there. Chad White has this. Just this home run potential. And he does a little bit in the passing game too. Uh, Zakari Franklin. If Mike Williams doesn't come back, this is this this is a meaty dude that has some good lawn speed. Uh, and then after this was just a lot of depth pieces. Because these all these picks are in the 200. Like um, Chase Lucas. He this this guy is gonna be a special teamer for years. He's this this guy could be your Matthew Slater. Uh, he's got experience all over the secondary corner slot safety. He could kind of do it all. Uh, Isaiah, uh, what is that? Isaiah Pola Mayo. Uh, what's guy I was pretty high on. That's just not playing well this year. He's got great interest in size for a safety, but it doesn't look like he's a guy that you can really trust on the back end. So yeah, 
Robert Cooper, just another run stuffer. You get good run stuffers late in the draft, and we did it with the last pick of the draft. So there we go. Los Angeles Rams. Our first pick was at 100. Like, you got to be kidding me, man. What the hell, Rams? How are you going to do this? Oh, so frustrating. But we got Kellen Dyche, who's a guy that could end up being your replacement or left tackle. He could be a guy that could play guard. He's having, after having a really good 2020 at Arizona State, he's having an incredible year this year. Alec Lindstrom just fits the blocking scheme for Sean McVay. Uh, Christopher Allen. I think this guy could have went a lot higher than this. He got hurt in the opener versus Miami, but he he has a couple of seasons on the tape that were pretty impressive, and I really think he is he could fly under the radar in this class. He's pretty good. Avery Roberts at the very it's linebacker depth at the very least. You're getting a really good special teamer here as well. Uh, Quinn and Lake. It's kind of in the same regard. A guy that played everywhere in the secondary for the most part, like box slot deep. Uh, but he's going to be a good special teamer as well. Nick Broecker is a guy I think is still developing, but he fits Sean McVay's blocking scheme. Coney Durr, I, I like this cat. This guy's just going to be a good football player that I think is going to stick around the league, be like the fifth or fourth corner on a lot of squads. So I think this was pretty a pretty good draft for considering we our draft didn't start till the 100th pick. The Miami Dolphins, baby. Fins up, baby. Fins up. Uh, I took Tyler Linderbaum because I freaking love Tyler Linderbaum. I'm a mark for Tyler Linderbaum. I took Tyler Linderbaum. Drake London. I don't I don't want to say he fell because of the ankle injury because it's only going to keep him out 10 weeks. I say only. He should be back in time for the combine. But we'll see. It might hurt him. I don't think it hurts him too much, but he ended up falling to the beginning of the second so we snagged that grabbed isaiah spiller at 99 so he's gonna be like the malcolm brown now in this offense uh matthew butler dude's got a lot of upside good length very explosive good motor a lot of upside uh nolan smith again good players fall in a draft it just happens nolan smith's also a guy that has a very small sample size i really peg him for to be a returner but I could definitely realistically see him coming out. So I feel like we've addressed a lot of a lot of good positions here. Uh, Cole Turner, I don't know if they keep Mike, Mike Isicki. I felt like that Hunter Long pick suggested we won't. So I grab Cole Turner because I think he does a little a little bit more than a Hunter Long uh, in terms of being a receiver. Fadu Kasi, just a very good linebacker in this class. Xavier Henderson, dude. This dude's a headhunter, man. I like Henderson. He might go a bit higher than this, man. Like, watching some of his tape, I get a little giddy. Uh, Bill Melton, just your speedster that can play on the outside. Uh, Andre uh, Andres is a developmental guy, probably. Or a depth guy or a practice squad guy. Uh, it was at the end of the draft, and I was like, Ugh, probably probably should have, maybe should have grabbed one more, other, one more offensive lineman. All right, we'll grab it here. All right, Minnesota Vikings, Andrew Booth Jr., because everyone and their mom is projecting this. Um, and if you're picking at 19, you're probably going to get a pick between, like, a McDuffie, a Booth. So Booth was there. Zach Harrison is kind of the mold of edge rushers that the Vikings like. Apparently, they were trying to acquire, uh, what, was, what was his name, uh, Clavon Chason. So a little bit different. But Harrison, like, he could go a bit higher than this because the upside's there. Like, we see it. It's just it's not consistent yet. He needs to be more polished. But here at 51, it's just kind of a steal. Uh, Josh Job, ha I, admittedly, I have yet to check out the other corner from Alabama. I hear he's a lot better than Josh Job. I would hope so. I'm not a big Josh Job guy. But we grab him because, you know, we, this, Minnesota needs corners. Uh, Jack Sanborn's just, I think, a really good uh, linebacker. That'd be good depth, kind of be like a Eric Wilson. Uh, Eric Gray, man, good receiving back. Good receiving back. It's pick 185. I jumped on it. Keith Gallman Jr., good uh, safety depth. And then, um, what is it, My Mietti at a Mizzou center. Uh, 
realistically probably doesn't make the roster, but I want to find a guy that can at least maybe challenge. Um, what is it? Bradbury? I forgot his name now. Uh, I don't know. Your center, because he ain't so hot. Like, he can be improved. He ain't bad, but he's not good. Uh, the New England Patriots. We grabbed Adam Anderson. I saw it in that Mike Renner draft and was like, I don't know why. Like, this just seems like such a good pick. So I did it in this draft. Uh, I really like the Adam Anderson pick. Uh, George Pickens ends up being the receiver we grabbed at 47. Um, I know. I'm going to get criticism for the injury thing because then we take Noah Daniels at 79. But Noah Daniels does have, like, elite cornerback traits. You just worry about the three season-ended injuries he's had during his time at TCU. And then Pickens is, like, your prototypical X-wide receiver. So, uh, Zachary Carter, dude, I think is a guy Bill Belichick would love. Uh, Cunningham's just some depth They're playing tackle right now at Arkansas. Could probably be a tackle guard um, type of guy. And Alton Julian is just a dude I want to talk about just because he has played very good for Oregon State this year. Not getting enough shine. I think he's a guy that can play a uh, single high if you need him to. Uh, but I like him kind of in the split high. Uh, so, yeah. Very good. Very good. Uh, we only had six picks. I think there's a lot of upside with these first three picks. Just going to say that. The New Orleans Saints. We took Chris Olave because, of course, we did. I love the fit. Zion Johnson. Uh, mainly, he's going to be probably your, your guard. Just because the, the Saints are getting good play from... Uh, Cesar Ruiz, he's still developing, I guess, but uh, was Andreas Pete? He's terrible, dude. He is just terrible. Uh, so, yeah, Haskell Garrett, just I think that is just a good addition to the defensive line um, rotation. Damani Richardson, depending on if they can't sign a. Uh, oh my gosh. Why can't. Is it Marcus Johnson, right? Is that who. Is that who's playing? Well, I can't. I I stink and love the Saints. Uh, this cat from Utah. Why can't I even think of his name? Mark Williams, not Johnson. Oh, I'm an idiot. Dang it. I anyway. I like that cat. But if they don't resign him, then yeah, let's just grab some. Not necessarily replacements. Some depth there. Isaac Taylor Stewart. He has elite traits. It's just the production's never caught up to it. So maybe a guy to develop. Brian Robinson Jr. I know. They traded for Mark Ingram. Let's grab more of a long-term answer to be a good compliment to Kamara. And I think he is that, dude. He is that. Jordan McFadden, he's the only good thing about the Clemson offensive line this year. A uh, guy that's probably a guard in the NFL. So we grabbed him late. Sincere McCormick, I was like, ah, hey, let's just grab more running backs. Because, hey, McCormick, man, he's got a little bit of uh, breakaway speed. I like his, uh, what do you call it, center of gravity, very low. Uh, breaks a lot of tackles. I like him a lot. On to the New York Giants, man. I This draft was interesting, I'll say that. DeMar Malio, Kenyon Green, we're addressing the trenches. And then Darion Kennard. We got him at 39. I was like, well, dang, there we go. Well, those are two top talents for the offensive line. We doing good. We doing good. We even address it later with Tyler Smith, who I've been told will get a senior bowl apparently. So I decided to include him. He's another guy that's probably this. He's in this weird. Is he a tackle? Is he a guard? I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, Henry Toto. I included him. I think there's probably a good chance he does decide to declare. I just don't think he should. Uh, I think there's still a lot of questions about him in terms of uh, just being more conscious in um, coverage, um, being a better finisher. Like, dude's a missed tackle machine. Uh, but we grabbed him. That's why I kind of I went with Marlon Robert, Robinson, too, at linebacker and bumper pull. I uh, just wanted to take a couple of other shots, good, get good linebacker depth because the Giants don't have that. Uh, Zach Charbonnet. I'm just saying, dude. Saquon. Oh, he went down. What a what a thought. Let's just grab a power back to take something off of. Uh, take 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 the weight off his shoulders, man. 
take the weight off his shoulders. Uh, Charbonnet, honestly, man, he, he's more than just power back, too. He's had a great year. Uh, Jeremy Rucker, he's there to uh, help out with the tight end position because Evan Ingram's inconsistent and Kyle Rudolph is old. Isaiah Thomas was just really good value at 149. They need help at the edge. So, yeah, let's get some pass rush. I really think Max Borke, he's a running back over at uh, Washington State. I think he ends up being a slot receiver in the NFL. But still having that type of speed that could potentially come out of the backfield or a guy that we could just line up consistently in the slot, it's kind of cool. And it was pick 232, so, yeah. The New York Jets, we grabbed Kyle Hamilton. Of course we did. Great pick, Ikem Ikwanwu. I love it. I love it. I love these first two picks. We address offense and we address defense. And then Christian Harris at 38. I I think the dude does have like Fred Warner potential, man. We just got to get him. Um, uh, we got to get him just be, getting a better feel for coverage and whatnot. Uh, Kyler Gordon felt this was kind of a bit more of a reach. I'll admit like Kyler Gordon was further down my board. But I didn't think I'd be able to get him at 70. And I think he's a really good scheme fit. So I snagged him. Uh, Trey McBride. Hey, let's see if he can be a George Kittle. Just saying, at the very least, you're getting a really good block in tight end. That has actually some like legit route running. Uh, Ricky Stromberg is just some depth. Jalen Naylor, I think, is the speed we need. On the outside there, I know they got um, Elijah Moore, but let's grab some more speed, man. Let's grab some more speed. Kenny Brooks, just uh, get some get some help behind uh, Michael Carter. I think they're good polar opposites. They're good change of pace, you know, with uh, Michael Carter looking like he could be a three down back, but like he's this smaller stop and go, um, hard to even put a hand on good in the receiving game type of back while Kenny Brooks just shrugs off contact like, you know, he's swatting a fly. Get out of here. Uh, Tyreek Smith, just this dude's going to be a good football player. He's not a high upside guy, but he's going to be just a good football player. And then Sean Dykes, I got him listed at fullback. He plays tight end. Like he could do, he's like this H back. He's like the Kyle Juice check, I think potentially of this class. Las Vegas Raiders. I went Trent McDuffie. I'm still a big fan of Trent McDuffie to the Raiders in the first round uh, because uh, Casey Hayward, he's got to move on. Let's grab uh, another guy that fits the scheme perfectly. Uh, I did grab two receivers, like John Mechie, uh, the third. I know you don't want to be grabbing receivers at Alabama anymore. No, no, we ain't going to stop. Uh, this guy's a separator. He's a speedster. Trey Turner, he's got a bit be better size, but he's the same type of guy. He's a speedster. He's a separator. He actually does a little bit after the catch, too. He's a good force miss tackler. That was the thing about Mechie. I don't think he really, like, he just doesn't handle anything physical well. So I thought we did a good job of getting two guys that could come and kind of fulfill that role as, like, the field stretchers. Um, we got Sawyer to kind of be, like, just some help on at guard. DJ Dale, just this this dude could probably go higher too. Like he's pretty legit, but uh, getting some help on the interior. Jason Poeta Mercer, I've seen probably the Alabama game and a couple of highlights on Twitter. That's about it. But hey, well let's include him. This guy's kind of stupid athletic. Um, Terrell Bernard there as a well, I guess is like late sixth round and then late seventh round we grab just more interior talent with Ed Ingram so overall like I don't love this draft I guess like I love the the McDuffie pick um the Mechie and Turner pick I, maybe feels a bit forced but I feel like we kind of had to force taking the best receiver on the board and some guys that could stretch the field because I don't want Derek Carr to stop throwing deep so I wanted to get some real separators. All right, Philadelphia Eagles. Aiden Hutchinson with pick number three because Derek Seeley wasn't there. We grab Kair Elam at number eight and then Matt Corral at number nine. So that's kind of a banger to start the draft. 
Uh, I believe the Eagles did release Eric Wilson recently. So uh, we picked up Brandon Smith, man. This dude's a monster. Wants to apparently be an FBI agent. Secret agent, man. Just go play. Just go make plays on my defense. <laughs> uh, Brandon Joseph. Uh, he's kind of fallen, I think, for a lot of people. He's probably a big candidate to return just because he's a redshirt sophomore. But he's here at 72, and I ain't going to complain about it. Uh, Jalen Watermeyer, just, I think, I think he has, he could be a solid tight end. Probably better tight end too in the league. I know I'm going to get a lot of flack. People don't like to hear that, but it's the truth. At least it's my truth. Uh, we got Chanel. I really feel like he's more of an edge, but we can kind of toe the line with what he wants, what they want to do with him on this defense. Uh, Justin Schaefer, just good pickup at that point. Brennan Cox. Just a good pickup at 178, just going to say. And then same with Zamir White, just a good pickup at 188. Good players fall in the draft. And I got to a point where I was like, at 172, I was like, ah, yeah, screw this. I'm taking best player available. I'm taking guys that are falling. And I think it worked out pretty well. All right. Pittsburgh Steelers. I took Kenny Pickett at 21. I took Kenny Pickett in the first round. And you might be like, bro, schmo. You serious? You've been, you've been spending so much time saying, I don't believe he's a first rounder. And guess what? I still don't. But you get to pick 20. You start to look at those quarterbacks. You probably have second round grades on. And you'd be like, yeah, they probably won't be available with us with our next pick. Let's go ahead and take it. I didn't think Kenny Pickett was going to make it to 53. And you know what? I think he's one of the more pro ready quarterbacks in this class. Uh, he doesn't have elite arm strength. He doesn't, uh, I wouldn't say he's like got laser precision or pinpoint accuracy either, but I think it's good. I think it's good enough to be very good in this class. So, uh, we're very good as an NFL starter, especially a team that's got a lot of pieces already in place there. Sean Ryan there to be potential tackle or maybe guard of the future. I don't know. We'll see. Kobe Bryant, man. Not a lot of people are talking about the other Cincinnati corner, but this dude's a freaking baller dude this guy's got legit ball skills i think my wife just got home so my dog's all happy uh tyke smith good option for the slot or box safety role uh brad hawkins kind of similar like i think it play a good box safety role um the guy has just been very good for michigan very not, not even talked about a lot either dude's a good big hitter yeah yeah my wife is home mm -hmm. close that Oh, we're right down the stretch here, too. So close. Um, Dontario Drummond, I think he's he could be a big slot or he could be a guy you can play on the outside. He gives you a little flexibility. Uh, that's why I grabbed him because I don't think Juju's back uh, or at least coming back. Robertson is going to be a good slot player out of Wake Forest. Probably could have went a lot higher, just didn't. So we snagged him there. Just a couple of receivers that I'm like, all right, let's see if any of these guys stick. Uh, Damian Clark, man, I think he's going to be a good linebacker around the line of scrimmage. Like, he's got good size, sure tackler. Uh, going to be very good against the run game. Fahoko, he's got some legit, like, pass rushing chops, I think. He's put on some weight, too, this year. And I, he's been looking good, man. He's been looking good. So, I was pretty satisfied with this class. San Francisco 49ers. Jalen Catalan. We don't got a first-round pick, so we... We took Catalan, helping out the secondary. I did. Uh, I kind of wanted to help out the secondary a bit more than I actually did, unfortunately. Like, I got Catalan, but then I don't do anything till pick 195 with DeJordan Strong. Just because I felt like every time my pick was up, I was like, I feel like I'm reaching for secondary players at this point. I don't want to do that. Uh, Darion Winfrey is just a good pass rusher on the interior. Um, Eric, uh, ooh, Ezu Kanama. Ooh, I think he's just super good after the catch. Like, just add this guy. He could play in the slot. He could play outside. Uh, I think they're kind of missing that third wide receiver in the lineup there. Get Muhammad Sanu out of here. Uh, Ali Gay was just great value. He's got, I think he's got NFL size. NFL length uh, might not be the most explosive, but he's going to be good depth at edge. And then, so Will McDonald, I, it's 
254. I could pass on that. I could pass on that. Uh, Ventral Miller, though, just some linebacker depth. So this class doesn't feel great. I'm not going to lie to y'all. Like, um, just because I feel like I didn't hit what I wanted to. Like, I knew I wanted to get another receiver. But I was like, man, I really want to address secondary. And I just... <sighs> It just didn't fall that way for me. Outside of Catalan, uh, it I, I couldn't. I just didn't address corner. I just I couldn't find the right spot. Cause like you get past pick one fifty, like, and it's like I'm just want to take the best player available. Like I don't want to reach for for like need. I just want to take guys. I just want to take good players, especially if they fit my system. So. Yeah, this was one of the probably one of the more like I came I came out let down because I just I couldn't get corner. I really wanted corner, <laughs> and I just couldn't get it. <laughs> like Perion Winfrey at seventy seven is not bad. Like dude, Eric uh, Uzakan Ma. I tried uh, at one fifteen, dude. Ian Cummins loves this guy. He thinks he's a first rounder. Like. <sighs> I, I don't, but <laughs> to each their own. Uh, Ali Gay probably could go oh, on day two. We're here at 155. Like, uh, I don't want, I'm not trying to defend myself. I just want to let y'all know where I feel like I fell short. Like, I think it's, it's a good class. It's just not what I wanted it to be. Seattle Seahawks. Uh, I grabbed Darion Kendrick at corner because cornerback help. Uh, hopefully the character stuff checks out. Uh, and then I grabbed a center too, Donovan West, man. Uh, because Kyle Fuller hasn't been good this season. Uh, Ethan Posick, I think is how you say his last name. The guy just has. It's unfortunate he got hurt this year, but like everyone thought this would have been his coming out party. I don't know. I'm not willing to wait. So I just wanted to address that. Sam Williams bring some edge help. I grabbed Thomas Booker who I think would be really good in that scheme. I think he's going to get underdrafted too. Because like at Stanford, I think he's just playing in the wrong scheme. This guy's this guy could take guys on one-on-one -on -one with relatively ease, and he's playing more gap control there at Stanford. Uh, Obina Ezzi, I think, is a guy with good upside. Like I think he moves pretty well for a guy his size. He's like 6'8", 3-something. So yeah, Kyron Williams... Hey, running backs kind of like they got Penny, they got Alex Collins, uh, Chris Clark. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, 189, it just felt good. It felt good. Why not? Uh, Charlie Collar, just because really there's no tight end option. Like, Will Disley's fun, but I don't know. Collar's probably a good tight end too, anyway. So, yeah, this may be. Uh, I don't, know, I don't think this is an unimpressive class. I actually kind of like this class. Like, because Kendrick, like, legit has first-round potential. Just does he got a problem, you know? Uh, Donovan West is pretty darn solid in his own right there at center. I think immediately contests and probably wins the center job. Uh, Sam Williams be good in the rotation there immediately. Uh, Eze could be a guy that eventually replaces Dwayne Brown. Like I think Booker immediately competes for uh, in the rotation on the interior. Williams could be the guy you get involved there. That's kind of like was it Travis Homer? Was that his name out of Seattle? Uh, so I think maybe probably competes right away. So Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I went with best available every time. With well within reason. Like Martin Emerson. Uh, I just thought it was a really good fit for Todd Bowles. And uh yeah, cornerback kind of kind of kind of a need for the Buccaneers. I know they're beat up, but they do have contracts coming up. Kenneth Walker at 56, man. See, didn't have to go in the first round, draft him. We got him here at 56. Oh boy. Uh Romeo Dubs at 88 uh was just like, yes, please, I'll take that. Uh, I found that wide receivers fell in this draft class when I was doing this mock. I had a lot of wide receivers fall uh, and got them for really good prices. So, yeah, we grab uh, him because he's a great deep threat, and you might, you're might you probably losing potentially both. 
Antonio Brown and um, uh, Chris Godwin. So, yeah, Greg Dolchich. I think he instantly becomes your best receiving option. Unless OJ Howard, you know, breaks out, maybe. But Greg Dolchich is a wonderful receiving tight end. Uh, Quay Brown, uh, Walker, excuse me, Quay Walker has played really good football. Like, dude, Georgia's linebackers are just studded. Kobe Whiteside's a guy that's got a lot of um, position versatility. Guy that I've been pretty high on. Uh, I just, I don't think it's just, he's just not going to be a highly drafted guy. You know, length ain't great, but the guy's got one hell of a motor. The Tennessee Titans. I grabbed Devin Lloyd at 31. I think he's a bit different than what they, the other options they have at linebacker. Uh, he's a guy that they could blitz, a guy that they that could be a great run stuffer. Uh, I grabbed nose tackle Corey Durden. Don't know if nose tackle is going to be his spot in the NFL. Don't think it is. But this is a guy that's just like a bull in a china shop. He has got upside for days. Great leverage, great length, great explosiveness. I'm a big Durden fan. And plus, this was we didn't have a second round pick. We have a late third so yeah the drop off in talent was kind of real after 70 uh james mitchell at tight end this dude's a dog man he's super physical and he's great 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 after the catch uh christian holmes is a very good man corner very good man corner there at oklahoma state he's got very good production when he was back at mizzou so i think this is a good good pick in the i think this would have been like the third fourth or fifth uh osiris torrance just some depth on the interior braxton jones i think could be a good developmental prospect at southern utah so yeah not a lot of picks to work with only six and only two in the top 100 did the best i could probably it's not a sexy looking draft i'll admit but i don't think it's a bad draft by any means um let's go washington football team dude malik willis we took him fifth overall Got our quarterback of the future. Jaquan Brisker, bam. Safety problem, solved. Hopefully. Hopefully. But Brisker, I th I think it was one of the more sure things in this class. Uh, I think he's really good. Like, he does may not have the upside of a lot of guys, but this he's a very smart football player. He's a very sure tackler. He makes a lot of plays underneath. I like him a lot. Uh, Bernhard Raymond is a guy with a ton of upside. Huge athletic upside. But he is a developmental prospect. He's only been playing the tackle position since 2020. Just going to throw that out there. Demario and Overshone. He long, he fast. I like those guys. I can't help it. So we grab him. Jamin Davis, he was long, fast. Look at So it's a match made in heaven. Uh, Perrion Strong Jr. we grabbed. This is pick 184. So grabbed one of the top running backs um, on the board. Just because you gotta feel like you could do better than maybe like a JD McKissick, who's been a he's actually a really good receiving threat. I can't even front, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I felt like we could have just grabbed more potential depth at running back, I guess. Uh, Emil uh, Ikior out of Alabama, just some depth on the interior potentially if he makes the roster. But uh, I like, I honestly, I really like the uh, the first four picks in this draft class for Washington. I think we did pretty darn good, but you'll let me know what, how we did in the comment section below. That's it for the video. My voice is actually starting to go. If you can't hear it, but hopefully you enjoyed the product. Let me know what you think. And until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.